guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight, the official YouTube channel of SerialAtMidnight.com. My name is Heath, and I'm glad you are here, because in this video, we're going to be talking about five of my favorite Christmas movies. Now, note that I do not say my top five Christmas movies are my five favorite Christmas movies, because if you've been watching the channel, uh, hanging out on our live streams and stuff like that, you know that favorites are kind of hard for me. Things are always in motion. Always in motion, the favorites are. Uh, things will slip down or things will rise up. It's very fluid. Uh, so I have a hard time with favorites. It's kind of like what I'm feeling passionate about at a given time, in a given year. So I have a hard time narrowing down five absolute favorite Christmas movies because I just my brain doesn't tend to work that way. But I will tell you, I've selected these five Christmas movies because I love them. I've loved them for years. Uh, and this year, these are some of my absolute favorites. So with that being said, um, with that caveat out of the way, I want to talk about Miracle on 34th Street. I love this movie. 1947. Uh, this was on a lot when I was a kid. I specifically remember this being on like Turner Classic Movies or American Movie Classics in the late 80s or the early 90s. I don't know. I was a kid though. And uh, it was very sweet. I don't, I don't know that it meant much to me at the time, but as I got older, this was the movie that I was like, oh, that was that, that was that movie that, uh, like it starts on, uh, the, the movie starts on the day of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It starts on Thanksgiving and it goes all the way up to Christmas. And it's kind of ambiguous as to whether the magic that's happening in the movie is real or if it's, if it's, you know, coincidental, it's up to the viewer to interpret it however they want to interpret it. And I like that approach. Uh, it's up to you. What you take from the movie is up to you. It's got a fantastic cast. This is a young Natalie Wood, who's a, who was a wonderful child actress, and then went on to be a wonderful just actress, period. Maureen O'Hara, wonderful. Edmund Gwynn is fantastic in this movie. And I want to talk about John Payne, because John Payne uh, is kind of like the Cary Grant noble 40s male lead here, just like the, the dashing uh, romantic guy. Uh, but he was in some fantastic film noir after this time period. Um, there's some there's some great stuff. 99 River Street. Seek out some John Payne noir and then see him in this. And you're like, wow, is this even the same guy? Uh, it's super cool. Uh, and then, you know, next I want to talk about I want to talk about Elf. And it's interesting because I don't have a whole lot to say about Elf. I love the movie. Uh, I saw this in theaters when it came out. And it was just, uh, like at the time, John Favreau, the director, had not done, obviously he had not, not done Iron Man or any of the, the Jungle Book or any of the Marvel Cinematic stuff. He was, I knew him primarily from uh, Swingers and from, he had a guest spot on Friends. Um, and then, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember if he had done Made at that point or not. I think he had, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. But my point is that, like, Will Ferrell was not necessarily a known commodity at that time. He was a rising star on Saturday Night Live, but he was not a household name yet. Uh, Jean Favreau, not, like, a smash director yet. The special effects guy who you could go to, like, well, he'll bring in this massive budget movie, uh, on time, on budget, maybe under budget. Like, he didn't have that reputation yet. Elf saw it in theaters. It was fun. It was good. No one, I don't think, thought that this was going to become an iconic Christmas movie. And I think it has. Like, I think Elf is probably one of the top five most iconic Christmas movies ever, which is crazy to me. I'm not saying it doesn't deserve it. I'm just saying it's kind of weird how we experience, like, I've experienced this movie in real time. This movie has aged with me. Uh, and you, you see the movie when it's new and you're like, that was a lot of fun. And then, you know, you watch it the next couple of years. You're like, oh, you know, this was a good movie. This was a really solid movie. And then a few more years go by and you realize that there's like a mania that's formed around the movie. Like it has become bigger than anybody could possibly have imagined. That's Elf. It's a great movie, but, uh, the, the transition into holiday legend status has kind of taken me by surprise. With that uh, out of the way, another one that's very popular that uh, I don't know how much I have to say about is Home Alone, the first Home Alone. Now this is part of the Home Alone pack. What is this called? The Home Alone collection, which is the first two Home Alone movies. And uh, so guys, when Home Alone came out, I was 11. And I was roughly the same age. Well, I was a little bit older than Kevin McAllister in this movie, but Home Alone 1 was my jam. Like, I, if you weren't around 
during that time i can't i don't know that i can describe to you what these movies did how these movies felt like batman 1989 the 1989 michael keaton tim burton batman movie was such a cultural phenomenon we had never seen anything like it before billboards in times square everyone had they had like the bat symbol like shaved into their heads and stuff everyone we're talking millions of people were all on the same page in 1989 and then it happened again the next year christmas of 1990 you guys this movie was to say it was a phenomenon is to undersell it this movie was in theaters for a solid year i remember going to see it christmas of 1990 christmas of 1991 it was still in theaters it's a christmas movie but we saw it like like i watched this movie in the summer i watched this movie in the spring it was one of the first uh movies that i can remember like blockbuster letting you pre-order your used copy because they knew that they were going to have to have a hundred copies of this vhs tape and uh they knew that they would not have need for a hundred vhs tapes like six months after it had come out so you could sign up to buy your own previewed copy for like 12.99 or something like that and we did that so we had this movie on vhs it was a used pre previewed blockbuster video copy that was our copy in the house for a long time and I saw this movie so many times. My friends, we loved this movie. We would talk about this movie. We would quote this movie. And so I understand. I, I've recently come to realize, basically since the last live stream, that there's a huge contingency of, of movie fans who this is their favorite Home Alone movie. Um, who this is, the, this is the movie that hit them at just the right time, at just the right age. But for me, it's Home Alone 1 because I, it was such a cultural thing. And the cultural experience was not around this movie. We love this movie. I, I went to see this movie in the theaters. I was convinced it was fantastic. But it did not have the staying power, at least among my group, my peers, my family. It did not have the staying power that Home Alone 1 had. Everything felt kind of reheated in this. The reheated... Uh, you know, keep the change of filthy animal kind of a scene, the reheated defense against the invaders. That, that It was all, it had been done before, but we had never seen anything like that before with Home Alone. So I'm not, I'm not diminishing this one because I understand. Like, I think it's so cool that there's a, a fan base for this. But for me, it was Home Alone 1. And I still get nostalgic when I watch this movie. Still. I still go back to Christmas of 1990 and basically all of 1991 because it was such a it went I'm telling you it went all through the the entire following year it was in theaters you could go see it we did go see it like people would go see this movie multiple times on the same day I can't even describe it I don't know that we have anything like that now maybe the superhero movies maybe um okay now for the last the last two the last two I want to throw some not surprises but you might be surprised by these. Uh, I mean, they are surprises, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Okay. Hold on. So, I love this movie completely unironically. I, I really do. I think that it is such a time capsule of, like, a certain time in my life. It, it, I'm going to be honest with you. I think one of the reasons that I like Jingle all the way so much is 1995, I think? 96. It's 1996. This is one of the last Christmas movies that I remember going to see in the theater with my family like after I think it was after Thanksgiving dinner we went to the theater with my grandmother we all went to go see Jingle all the way and I'm sure that they thought like well this is just a quaint it's Arnold Schwarzenegger ha 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 it's like well this is not very good but something to do on uh, on Thanksgiving uh but looking back it's one of the last Christmas movies that I saw as what I would consider being a child I was like 17 when this came out and it was one of the last times that i remember like having that family experience um where we all would go together where we were all you know watching this thing uh as a as a as a family um and it, it also just represents the, the time really it's very special this time this is arnold schwarzenegger kind of before the fall kind of towards the tail end of the glory days of Schwarzenegger, you know, I think we can say like he, he really picked up steam with Terminator 2 and then, you know, like 91, 92, 93, 94, he was still really on fire. By the time of, say, Eraser, uh, he had cooled off. And I think this is one of the last classic period Schwarzenegger movies. Um, 
And just the storyline, you know, it's got, so Jake Lloyd is the little boy, Anakin Skywalker is the little boy. And so I love it because of that, because I do love The Phantom Menace. Uh, I don't know if it's cool to admit that. I love The Phantom Menace. I think it has, I understand it has problems. It's certainly not a perfect movie. No movie is perfect. It has a lot of problems, but Jake Lloyd is not one of them. He was a little boy who was doing what he was told to do. And he's, uh, he's fun to watch in this movie. But Schwartz, like all the shenanigans, all the gimmicks in this movie, the Sinbad stuff, it so works on me. There's so much nostalgia tied to 90s, mid-90s stuff for me. So... It's basically a dad looking for an action figure for his kid. And <laughs> yeah, sign me up, man. Sign me up. Last pick. This is going to blow you guys away. I'm not saying it's my number one favorite, but I do love this movie. You're going to be like, what? <sighs> Ernest Saves Christmas. Yes. Yes. Um, so I loved this movie when I was a kid. This was uh, like... What kid of this uh, of my age, maybe even younger, did not think that Ernest... P. Worrell was like the funniest dude ever to walk the earth. Uh, we, Ernest was huge. Ernest had his own Saturday morning show. Ernest had multiple movies and specials. Uh, Ernest was fantastic. He was a big deal. And so this movie came out in the late 80s. This is 80, I want to say it's 89. Uh, it is not written on the back of this, so we will see later. But it was the late 80s, and uh, it's, it's super cheesy. Uh, I don't, I would not say that it necessarily holds up, but here's what I'm saying. I watched it when I was a kid. I loved it. I remember going to a Christmas party, a church Christmas party, circa 1991, Home Alone era time, and uh, eating pizza and watching Ernest Saves Christmas. And we thought it was just the best thing ever. 20 years go by. I don't think about Ernest. I don't talk about Ernest. I don't watch Ernest. If Ernest comes up, I was like, oh yeah. Ernest, wow, that was out there, right? A few years ago, out of nostalgia, it was probably five years ago, out of nostalgia, I find this movie and I pop it on and I watch it. And it was like years were stripped away and I was a kid again and I was able, I had come through all the cynicism of my teenage years and the cynicism of my 20s. And as I've gotten older, and, and honestly, having children does this to you, you, you get, hopefully, you get a little bit more, you become able to believe a little bit more in magic and in family-friendly things, things that have a positive message, things that make you feel good. And being able to rediscover that in my mid-30s really was something interesting. It was really something special. And so this has rejoined my list Again, I'm not saying it's my favorite Christmas movie. I'm not putting it at the top, but I could not do a five favorite Christmas movies list and not talk about Ernest Saves Christmas because, listen, <laughs> I'm aware. How many YouTube channels are talking, grown men talking about Ernest Saves Christmas and how special it is to them? Probably not a lot. So <laughs> I'm bringing the unconventional picks, but I'm also bringing the honesty, trying to connect with you. Like, seriously, like this is just such... It's so sweet, you guys. Like, it just makes me believe in Christmas a little bit more. The older you get, the harder it gets to believe in Christmas. And you kind of see it through your kids' eyes or your family members' eyes. But for whatever reason, I'm able to see Ernest the way that I used to see Ernest. And uh, it, it means a lot to me. So that's five of my favorite Christmas movies. I would love to hear... Oh, I'm forgetting. Um, I was told... I was, I was tasked by Bree to talk about... A Christmas Story, because she loves this movie. This is her, one of her absolute favorite Christmas movies. Uh, she watched this every single year, like I'm sure a lot of you guys did, because I know for a while, maybe even still, it comes on like 24 hours for a solid loop uh, around Christmas time, like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, A Christmas Story. Um, I do not have that experience with this movie. I did not watch this when I was a kid. I specifically remember being at my grandmother's house probably around the same time that we would go see Jingle All the Way and it being on TV, like TBS or something like that and turning it on and then I think maybe it was the old fudge part and then it turning right back off. So I had no relationship with this. I don't know that I saw this movie until I was at least 20. Uh, but my wife, Bree, loves this movie and I have been told to please include this on her behalf and also for you guys. So A Christmas Story is 
her favorite. So guys, I want to thank you for hanging out and talking about Christmas movies. I would love to know what your favorite Christmas movies are. Not even necessarily the ones that you watch over and over again, but the ones that kind of reignite that childhood sense of belief and wonder and magic. Uh, because as I get older, that really is what Christmas means to me. It's about trying to reconnect with um, a less cynical, more open and embracing uh, version of myself. That younger, that kid version of myself has become... Uh, that's the goal, right? So I would love to know what your picks are. Uh, guys, the, the drive to 10,000 subscribers continues. We, I know we can do it. We picked up like 3,000 subscribers in the course of about two months. Channel turns two years old in February, and I would love to be at 10,000 subscribers. We can do it. We have less than 4,000 to go. Uh, so please, thumbs up this video, like it, subscribe, share it with your friends. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a wonderful uh, Christmas. This is not the last Christmas video that will be coming out before the big day. Uh, but we are counting down to Christmas and uh, whew, this is exciting. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you and I will catch you later.